Um, soil data is typically collected as, as samples from the fields. And uh, we take a sample here and we take a sample there. And then it's, it's up to our statisticians to, to, to predict kind of the distribution of that soil between this point and that point. So we apply a lot of uh, spatial statistics and machine learning to, to get that done. Um, and then we collect a lot of data from partners, national soil institutes, uh, research projects, uh, and, and we try to combine all that data into a global model of the soil. And uh, that's called soil grids, and uh, that, that's quite u intensively used. And so my, my team uh, maintains that spatial data infrastructure that, that ingests all that data and uh, advertises those data products uh, to, to the to wider world. Oh yeah, so on top of that, we uh, go to national soil institutes to improve uh, their SDI skills so they can more effectively work with soil data. So overall, the whole soil data will uh, benefit. Some pictures. This is the, the soil museum that we have in Wageningen. It presents like a representative collection of soil profiles, like the, the first top meter of the soil. And then uh, every Wednesday afternoon you can come and watch. And we have schools from Europe going here, uh, soil studies, to, to look at those profiles. But this is just a subset of our collection. We, ha we aim to have a representative sample of every soil type in the world. And these are stored like this. So this is thousands of these, these profiles uh, being down in our basement. Um, and that's just uh, one thing that, that's nice to look at. But as a researcher, you can also request a sample. So from each of these soils, we have representative samples from different layers. Um, and researchers can do a request to get a sample if they want to do compare different clay types over the world, for example. So that's what we do. And then let's go to the data thing, because that's what we were here for. Um, metadata is an important aspect of, of, of any SDI. It helps us to, uh, if we have data in our, our file repository, helps us to understand what is the data, how can I use it, and uh, uh, who to contact if, if this is unclear. It supports you, your colleagues, the outer world, but also the search engine crawlers, and even the machine learning models to understand the data in a, in a better way. And unfortunately, despite the acknowledged benefits, made the data availability is, is still low or, or poor quality. So this is one of the big drivers of, of, uh, of my work. So, and then specific to soil science, is that uh, soil data, of course, takes a long route for when, when you dig a hole here it goes to the lab, is analyzed on certain properties, properties are sent back to the SDI, then go into statistical processing, um, and then there's the final data. So it's a long route. We need to trace that. We need to understand how that data was produced. And that's uh, one of the, uh, the uh, aspects that is relevant here is which procedure was used to calculate the pH. Because if you calculate pH in water, it will give you a different value than if you uh, estimate the pH in, in uh, dry air. So we need to understand how the pH is measured to understand what the value means. And um, this is often taken for granted because we always do it like this. Well, you do, but maybe 20 years ago they didn't, and maybe in the next country they don't. So if we want to combine that data between your department and the next department, we, we need to know what, me uh, what measures you, you used. And we don't want to look into PDF reports to, to find out. On page 22, it was, there was a small section about this. No, this should be on the data, on the metadata. So this is another aspect that kind of recently came up, that there's, there's a growing uh, hesitance to share uh, location data on soil. It's related to liability, like, okay, there, we found this, this uh, impurity. Who's to blame for that? So, so we, this, this gets more sensitive to, to share this type of, uh, of location data. So you need to, we need to care carefully um, keep in our metadata what are the usage constraints of this um, uh, data set. 
And this is also another thing. These machine learning models, they eat data. We literally feed it thousands of data sets uh, coming from Google and Earth Engine or various sources, Copernicus. And um, the model decides which one is relevant to make the best prediction. And then, so then of those thousand, hundreds stay in the model. Um, so we need to have good metadata on those thousand data sets to understand later the traceability of these predictions. So that's why, why metadata is especially uh, important for us. Um, so let me now come to the, to the kind of uh, uh, idea here, is that we use metadata as a recipe to guide uh, the data lifecycle. Um, unfortunately, my, my uh, colleagues, uh, researchers, uh, don't put a lot of metadata, and like many of us. At most, they put a readme of text in, in the file folder. And um, the goal of my efforts is to lure them to, to generate more metadata while they process all these uh, the data sets downloaded from Google Earth Engine. And um, so this will, will yeah, prevent the, 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 uh, the duplicate effort and I, I tried to show them the benefits of putting that metadata. With the goal to finally use those metadata as kind of a, a recipe uh, how this, this data uh, of the life cycle of that data. When uh, is it created? When is it reviewed? Uh, when is it published? And when will it be archived? And for that we need DevOps principles because those uh, principles are really fit for this purpose when and how is software deployed, and when is it archived, and when is it good to go? When can it be released? Um, so our approach starts with uh, a Git repository. So we put those metadata files generated by the scientists on a Git repository, and then use CICD pipelines to process that. Um, if we detect uh, missing metadata of a data set, we try to generate that from the file and we notify the scientist, please go back to that file and, and add your, your thoughts. And then we crawl the, 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 the metadata from that um, uh, project repository. We use the PyGeoMeta uh, library, which is a library developed in the GeoPython community. And it's a YAML uh, encoded uh, metadata model, which makes it really hard, easy to use, both by the machines as well as the users, and very optimal to Git. Um, so we built this geodata crawler, which is also an open source project. Very happy to, to you find it on PIP. You can, can uh, easily try it. Um, it's typically crawling a file repository for metadata files, and then gathers it into uh, any uh, standard that you need. And uh, we can then load that content in a, into a search in a searchable catalog. And here we, we've selected PyCSW, but, but GeoOrchestra, like just shown, what is also a very good uh, option. Um, PyCSW is a, is a Python library which is very aware of the OGC standards. So it supports a lot of the, the OGC uh, standards, which is very important for us considering our diverse uh, user community. But it's, for example, also used as a, a module in GeoNode and CCAN, CCAN Spatial. Um, with the upcoming uh, PyCSW 3.0, uh, we will have OGC API records uh, support which also gives us an HTML interface, which makes PyCSW also able to run uh, standalone. And uh, that, easy, that HTML is quite easy to, to uh, fit with our needs of the organization using Jinja HTML templates. So some screenshots. Um, this one is from one of our catalogs and uh, the interesting aspect here, what has been added, is uh, the added me on Git uh, button here. Because this metadata is stored on Git, we can easily invite people to uh, go to the Git repository and look at that uh, MCF file, which is the, the YAML convention from that PyGeoMeta standard uh, approach. 
And uh, people can create a pull request or create an issue about this metadata record. Hey, that address of that organization is wrong. Or even uh, suggest an, uh, the proper value. For those that don't like um, uh, the YAML and the Git, we, we have this metadata editor, which uh, if you click the Save button, will generate this YAML file. So for those that feel uncomfortable, and then we, we, we run CI CD pipelines. So when the change of the metadata is detected, um, the, the metadata is published to the catalog. And then that's the nice thing of pipelines. This is GitLab. Uh, so you have these failed pipelines, so, so some bad metadata or something went wrong. And at some point, you're happy as a DevOps because it's a past. So we can continue our daily activities. Um, from that, we also publish map services. So the, we use the metadata, the, the title, the abstract, uh, uh, to create map services in map server. Uh, the crawler tool generates these map files, which are uh, used to uh, set up these services, and also puts back a link in the metadata, which points to those uh, map services. Um, an SLD can be provided uh, so to style the layer. So if you put on your file repository also an SLD file, then it will use that style to, to uh, draw the layer. And uh, the metadata is updated, like I said. SLD, you can typically, in QGIS, export your style as SLD. So that, that's quite, quite easy to, to, to use. Some screenshots here. Oh yeah, so we use Terraria.js, which is a client-side uh, library, uh, which is like a web GIS component, which has a nice, uh, uh, it's, it's a, an open source project, React, uh, um, Cesium, and Leaflet from Australia. And um, uh, this one has a CSW search. So from here, I can query the catalog to, to um, get uh, data sets. That shows a nice legend, and we also have an about page, which links back to the, can I see? It links back to the um, catalog. That's the link that is from the WMS capabilities back to the catalog. So that is all managed through this uh, pipeline. And then some pictures of, of the front end of a catalog. We have an, we run actually quite a lot of catalogs because a lot of these Horizon Europe research projects they say, oh, let's start with a catalog. And then I, I deploy a catalog for them, and then they put records. And so, nice. A bit, so after experimenting a bit with these approaches, we noticed that, that there was a, like a, a data community uh, growing around these uh, metadata repositories. We have put all these metadata and CI CD scripts on Git. So, so people, you can comment or, or get inspiration of any of these uh, pipelines. Create issues or pull requests to, to improve aspects of it. Myself, I run a lot of times into a broken link in a catalog, and then I want to give feedback to the owners of that catalog or the service behind it. And um, I get sometimes quite frustrated that I can't find a good contact point or never get a response. And now, with this approach, I'm really happy because I can just create a pull request to, to uh, fix my own service in this case, but if others uh, adopt this, I can also support others. So what's next? Uh, ISREC, as a, we also run a couple of Horizon Europe projects. One is called SoilWise. And here the aim is to harmonize uh, soil data from different member states in Europe. Um, and we, during this project, which will run another three years, we will extend uh, this workflow approach with um, uh, harmonization options. Because you notice me different member states uh, storing the data in different formats. So for us, but also for the European Union, it's really hard to combine those, those data from the different member states. And um, with this initiative, we hope to involve the community in uh, describing the data, so the harmonization will be easier. So, for example, one organization uploads a data set, another organization uh, shares its ETL configuration to uh, work with that data. 
And the third organization says, hey, I want to do the same thing. I, let me use that ETL configuration to uh, get start, yeah, be ready uh, sooner. So uh, that, that was the presentation, some takeaways here. Uh, so Git is a very interesting platform uh, to facilitate um, a catalog of data sets and how to maintain it. CICDA pipelines are very useful to validate metadata, to share metadata, and uh, even harvest metadata. So in some of our projects, we harvest metadata from various catalogs using CICD processes. Because CICD gave me these pipelines with failed and succeeded and failed, and the complete log of the harvest, so that's really nice. Um, no, and an orchestration of this type of microservices really uh, facilitates maintainability and flexibility. And this is all inspired and facilitated by you, the open source community. Thank you very much. So I think we have time for a few questions, everyone. Okay, I, I, I have a question. So, which um, strategies did you use to convince your colleagues to uh, actually contribute metadata? I mean, did you talk to them one-to-one? -one? Did you produce more documentation? Or you did something more top-down, like saying, you need to <laughs> create metadata for the data sets? Yeah, so, so one of the ap approaches we used was, I hear is an Excel sheet, start populating the fields, and I, I import the Excel sheet. And at least we have some uh, common ground starting point, and from there, I put them on Git, and, and then they say, okay, I want to improve that. Well, go to Git, you can improve it there. Uh, the other approach we've used is, uh, um, everywhere where I saw a readme.txt file, said, please, open the file and put some structure in it. Say, this is the title, this is the abstract, this is the date and then I can parse it. Now I can't. So that's another approach. Um, we used a very interesting mechanism of inheritance, so any subfolder inherits from the folder above. So if you put your metadata in a folder higher, it would apply that to all the other levels more down the tree. So at least there is some metadata. And, and, and a lot of talking, of course. <laughs> Yeah, I imagine. And asking, like, hey, what is this data set? Why, why is it not described? <laughs> yeah. When you push a YAML file to get, it will run a pipeline to uh, generate a map server file. Yes. And it, um, by get bot or something like this, it will make a pull request for the same get repo or where this uh, map file will go? Ah, that's a good question. Um, we have different uh, um, approaches. Because the map file is automatically generated, I usually just put it to a, to a WebDAV repository. But we could uh, commit it to Git again. And, and yeah. Any more questions? So uh, one thing, uh, you mentioned that you, uh, I really like this mechanism where you import the files and you create a searchable catalog from the readme files that are in the, in the repository. Uh, but I was thinking, I mean, uh, I, as you have some data already there and you have a folder structure, did you consider doing a, a crawlable catalog or a static catalog just to, like as a low hanging fruit, just to make the data available? Yes, it's an interesting question also, because uh, right at the start of that PyGA API and, and Stack uh, yeah. had a plugin, or had a, there was a Stack plugin in PyGA API, and uh, I actually used some of that code. Say, hey, that's a good idea. I, I need that. <laughs> and then later I re rewrote the whole thing. But um, I wanted to more tr be more traceable. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want the thing to be in memory, because memory I, I can't touch. I want to have it written down in Git, so I know who to blame when, when there's something wrong. Makes sense. Yeah. Actually, yeah. No, no, no. Let's <laughs> talk over dinner. <laughs> okay. Uh, if there are no more questions, thank you again, Paul, for this presentation. Yes.